What's up? How are you guys today? Knife sharpening 101. I'm going to teach you guys the basics on how to sharpen your knife. This is something a lot of chefs actually have to do every night because they're chopping all day. Most people maybe once a month. And to be honest, I would just take this to a local guy if there is someone. Sometimes at these farmers markets, you'll have a guy with like a sharpening wheel and he does the knives really quick and easy. It's worth it unless you want to sit down for an hour or two to sharpen a few knives. So that's what I would do. Or if you're in the boondocks, middle of nowhere, and you have some extra time, this is what you need. Now, before I show you guys the whetstones, there are quicker and easier solutions, but the knife's not going to be as sharp. These stones, it's going to take five to 10 minutes, depending on how dull the knife was. You got little quick things like this that, you know, you just, you run over the knife. I mean, this isn't the best design thing. It's kind of sketchy. But, you know, you put your hand on this and then you go over the knife a few times. And this works pretty well. It gets the knife kind of sharp, but, you know, it's not super sharp and the edge doesn't last that long. All this stuff, guys, including that, I'm going to put it on my Amazon shop. So I have three stones here, and that's because we have to go from coarser to finer. You know, the coarser stones, a lot rougher, taking much more steel, much more metal off the edge. And then the finer you go, the more refined it is. This stone we're not going to actually be using today. This is a 400-800. And if I need to sharpen like my wood cutting axe or something really blunt that takes a lot of abuse, or if you have a really messed up knife, you might use this, but it's going to take so much metal off the edge and kind of ruin uh, the bevel, which is, you know, the angle that the knife is currently sharpened at. So I have two stones and these are combinations. So this is a 3000-8000. And this, uh, which isn't labeled, is a 1,000, 6,000. So ideally, you have three. One that's around 1,000, which we have here. One that's about 3,000 to 4,000, which we have here. And then you want a five or 6,000, uh, which we have here. Uh, this 8,000, we might not actually use. And then you can get really fine, too. We have a, a leather strop that I'll show you guys if you're trying to get it razor, razor sharp. But you know, if you're feeling this 8,000, it's actually really, really, really smooth. So the knife's pretty much gonna be sharp by the time you go to that to, uh, to make it any sharper. These have been sitting in water. <laughs> They're called uh, wet stones. I'm not sure if it's because it's wet, but uh, they do soak up water and need to be soaked for you know, an hour or two before you actually use them. And uh, these are on my Amazon shop as well, guys. So I'll link that down below if you guys need some. But again, you know, to buy all this and do the prep and all that type of stuff, that's why I'm saying, you know, just get someone local to do it once a month if you don't have the time. And guys, be sure to use a really high quality glass bottle of mineral water so you don't get any fluoride or chlorine on your knife. Guys, that was a joke. This might be the only time I've ever used tap water. So this is a heavy knife I kind of use for like chopping up tartare and stuff. So I'm not going to spend like 20 minutes sharpening this on these stones, you know. I'll probably just run that other thing over this one. But I do have some you know, more delicate Japanese knives that I use pretty frequently. So here's my chef's knife and here's my vegetable cleaver that I use a lot. We're just gonna do the, the classic chef's knife for you guys for this video. And when we talk about the bevel, the angle of the blade, you would look at the knife this way. I mean, it's hard to get this camera in focus, but the end of the blade turns into like the really tiny edge that's what the bevel is. And usually on most kitchen knives and Japanese knives, it's around 20 degrees. Uh, sometimes it goes a little lower. So, you know, 90 degrees, the knife is straight up. 45 degrees is halfway, you know. So you go from 90 to about halfway down is 45. And a 45 degree angle um, is actually okay. It's not that sharp. That's what you would use for like a wood cutting axe or something that is using a lot of chopping force. And then to get to 20, it's about halfway down from 45 and then a little more. So the tricky part here is when we're on these whetstones it is replicating the angle of the sharpness. And they do have like new devices that'll actually hold the knife at that angle, but then you're gonna spend more money and it's gonna take longer to sharpen. So uh, this, it's not too difficult. So we're gonna start off with our 1000 over here. Uh, I have uh, just a bowl of water here because we will have to lubricate this a little bit. And there's a few different ways to approach this. 
the most important thing is that the knife is at a similar angle when you're making the motion. So, you know, whether you're going like this across the whole stone, whether you're going like this, whether you're doing something like this, whatever you're comfortable doing, when you put the knife down and go up, it has to be roughly the same amount every time. So if I go, if I'm trying to measure, you know, from 90 to 45 to 20, you do it a few times, 90, 45, 20, you want to get an idea of where 20 is. And I like to lay the blade flat and go up about that amount every time. So I do this. I'll go back and forth 10 times, go move up on the blade, go back and forth 10 times, move up on the blade, go back and forth 10 times, move up on the blade, back and forth 10 times, then up to the tip. The tip is going to be a little different because you have to angle the knife to get the entire tip. Then we do the other side. So down, up, about the same. Ten times back and forth. As we go up the blade. So I like doing the knife in sections because if I'm down here and I'm at this one angle and doing this section, it's easy to maintain the angle. Sometimes you'll see people go like this with the knife, but it's kind of hard to maintain. I mean, you can kind of maintain the same angle doing that, but to me, it's just easier to, to go like this, this, and then just do some pretty rapid motions back and forth. I mean, just testing the sharpness of this knife now, it's already pretty sharp uh, after only doing, you know, 10 motions back and forth on each side. And the way I test the sharpness of the knife is you put it on your nail. And if, if when moving gently across your nail, if it kind of sticks, that means it's really sharp. Don't do that stuff where like you see people shaving themselves, testing the tip with their finger, you're gonna slice yourself open. All right, so we'll just put a little more water on this stone and we'll go back and forth one more time on each side at a thousand grit just to be safe. Again, the only part that's gonna be at a weird angle is when you do the tip. So that was a thousand grit. That's as coarse as we want to go with this knife. Now we're going to do 3000. So we're going a little finer to make the edge even sharper. Same procedure guys. Oh, and I don't think I said earlier, this uh, wet towel on the cutting board is so the stone doesn't move. Sometimes these stones get uneven, which isn't that good for the knife. So don't press too hard. It's a gentle, consistent pressure. You can see in the water, you know, there's it's a little gray, which means, you know, we're taking some metal material off of the stone. And on the knife, you can see there's some color from the stone. So, you know, there's a, a lot of friction sharpening this knife. All right, so on the 3000, we did 10 movements throughout the whole blade twice on each side. So now we'll move up to 6000. It's very smooth. You, you know, you can feel noticeably less friction. So when you go up in grit, when it's finer, you're, you're even gentler with the kind of rubbing motion. Because when I'm pressing down on this blade, if I press a little harder, I'll notice I won't feel any more friction. So you want to find the point where you're pressing hard enough that you have maximum friction. And then when you press harder, you don't really feel much more because there's no benefit to, to pushing down too hard on this. You don't even really need to go up to, to 6,000 or 8,000 here. Just the 3,000 we did previously is plenty sharp for most kitchen knives. If you get in the groove a little bit and used to the angle, as long as you're at the similar angle, however you sharpen on the stone is fine. It should feel the same as you go up and down the blade. Then 
That's our 6,000. And since we have 8,000, we might as well use it, right? So this is the final sharpening on the stones. Super smooth. Super smooth. Now I'm kind of rushing. I'm not being super careful and slow with these motions. So we'll see how the end result is. So we went over a few times on the 8,000, but there's one last thing you can do if you have it. So this is a piece of leather. I think I bought some scraps off eBay for a few dollars. And the inside of this, the hide, you know, if you rub this, it, it kind of comes off a little bit. So when you do that on the knife, it will fill in the burrs on the edge. And what burrs are is there's like tiny little metal holes, imperfections from when you sharpen the stone. So what this leather does is it fills in those holes and makes it really sharp. And in a barber shop, old school barber shop, you know, there's sometimes like videos of the guy rubbing the razor blade on like a leather strop. Um, so they actually sell leather strops. This was just a cheap thing at the time. Um, you can look up leather strop. I'll see if I find one on Amazon. I'll put it on my store too. But this is kind of overkill. You know, you don't really, you know, you're not shaving your face with this. And you have to do a really good job on the whetstones for this to make a difference. So the typical test to see how sharp a knife is, is, you know, you take a piece of computer paper and you kind of slice it. This is sharp, but it's not like super razor sharp. We did okay. As you get used to it, as you get better at holding that like 20 degree angle and you're more consistent, uh, then the knife just gets sharper and sharper. But for most purposes, you don't have to do like a crazy good job. It's already a massive improvement from the blunt knives that a lot of people are using in their kitchen. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this uh, gives you a little bit of insight to uh, go to your local farmer's market and let someone else do it or someone nearby that does knife sharpening. But you guys can go to frank if you want to check out all of my businesses and support me. As I mentioned earlier, I'll put the stuff on the Amazon shop down below if you guys want to check that out. As always, if you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.